it going? Welcome to another day of chess and psychology. Uh, today I'm gonna do a lot on Maroxi and we are combining um, chess and psychology with the end game class that we have and I would like to cover more on Maroxi and to continue to show end games that are related that you can get from Maroxi's end game. I'll be showing the games from here and I'll be monitoring the chat from there so you'll see my head moving a lot. Um, so I am trying to... Ooh, I already have a hundred people watching. Wow, guys. Everything Whoops, is sorry, I forgot to mute. There we go, mute. Wow, I already have a lot of people. I am very proud, thank you. All right, so um, without further ado, let's start. So Maroxi is very complicated and uh, the, to me Maroxi is the pawn structure and so uh, I'll show you this game first because this was a very nice game that I played six years ago but just understanding the pawn structure and understanding what are you trying to achieve with white and um, just how beautiful the attack can be. So I'm gonna start with a few of my games and then after that I'm going to switch to some of the, you know, the super GMs, the classics guys, those guys. <laughs> and we're gonna watch some of their games and ideally wrap it up with how to finish in the end game. So I'm also going to talk a lot about different positions, different openings that you can get to this Maroxi. Um, so if we don't get to all of it today, I do have two hours of uh, my choice on Thursday that um, we can uh, continue uh, doing more Maroxi there. So, hi everyone. I see a lot of highs and I see 107 viewers already. Wow. Okay. So, um, one of the classic ways of getting to Maroxi is this opening and ideally um, you want to achieve something like this and so this is one of the most classic ways to get to Maroxi. So um, just some of the super basic ideas. Um, with white you have to really watch out for this diagonal so because of that sometime soon future you're going to play moves like this and move your rook to b1 or c1 so that's your plan for the queen side that's one of your plans for the queen side and for king side one of the big plans that you have is to not let this guy this knight g4 because knight g4 whoops because knight g4 is kind of attacking your bishop and is taking over um that idea so when you play queen d2 it's important that you have these and most likely you're gonna do short castle with the pawn on f3. There are instances instances that you play f4, but so that's why it's planned. Let me take a quick look on the chat and see what is going on. Ooh, South Africa. I was I was in South Africa in 2014. Very beautiful country. I wish I did one of those safaris, but I didn't have time. Um, so that's why that's what White wants to do. For black, there are different ideas. I'm gonna show you. Well, most likely black is going to do short castle, so this is a short castle. Now, for black, there are some ideas with d6, bishop d7, and starting to push over here. So that's one of the typical ideas. There are other ideas with b6 and bishop b7, and there's some ideas with bishop coming to e6, and in those instances are where we kind of can consider f4 moves so that's that's just uh, like a super super short of it and i just wanted to share that before we start to uh, jump into this game okay so whoops all right so um in the game that i played e4 c5 knight f3 g6 d4 my opponent didn't take he played bishop g7 early on and I know that taking here is theory and in the game I knew that this was theory and that um, that is something that I could consider doing but I just didn't really want to make the game super theoretical and I preferred to see if I could switch it to some pawn structures that I know better with 
for example, Maroxi. Hi from India and Mexico. Wow, I have been to India, not Mexico yet. It is on my to travel list. Um, Barcelona, yeah, I, I love Barcelona. I lived there a year, really loved it. Whoa, <laughs> a lot of memories. Okay, so C4. Um, my opponent simply played knight c6, but for example, if take take, this kind of transposes to the Maroxi uh, pawn structure that we saw a little bit earlier. If, for example, let's say d6, taking is a good idea because you achieved this uh, still Maroxi pawn structure with your knight out already a little bit. So that's also a good idea. And one of the things that I really like about this Maroxi pawn structure for white specifically is how much space white has. So you can play in the queen side, center, king side, and yeah. So thank you. Cool. So yeah, that is one of the things that I was thinking about. So that's one of the ideas with queen a5, to try and avoid that perhaps. But um, you can still try to achieve the same idea if take, there's knight d5 and coming back to haunt this c7 square. So the white is super active and I really really like that. So anyways, my opponent decided to play after c4 instead of queen a5 or d6 or take, knight c6. I have a hype from Poland. Hi from Chicago, Italy, been all of the, those three places, really, really liked um, Poland. Mm, I, I shopped a lot there. <laughs> um, wow, it is, I'm so glad I have so many viewers from everywhere. Italy, um, Italy, I loved Venice. There are other places that I love, but Venice was my most memorable one. And, um... So what else did I... Okay, so uh, here, after knight c6, what we wanted to do was, I wanted to take after come uh, to queen a5, bishop d2 for example. Uh, this is another kind of reaching the Maroxi pawn structure and the, the position setup. It's not exactly... Um, it's not exactly typical because you usually have your bishop on e3 and your knight on d4 and stuff like that. But the pawn structure um, is same, so you can try to apply most of the ideas anyways. So, um, I managed to get some of my pieces out like that. I played this h3 because I really didn't want to deal with the... Uh, the pen. So h3 to avoid the pen, castle, castle, bishop e6. And so now I have my first question for you guys. How do you want to continue developing with white? So that's my first question. And let's go to the chat while you guys are thinking a little. I agree, the queen is in a funny place. Philippines, loved it. Got my first Asian Youth Championship medal um, there. 2011? Wow, I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, hi from France. Great country, Argentina. I have a lot of friends from there. Montreal. Surprisingly, I've never been to Canada. I should visit. Netherlands. Ooh, I really love Netherlands. Germany. I had my. I've been to Germany so many times. Oh, thank you for your donation. Ah, Nixon. Ah, thank you for my birthday. Ah, thank you. That's very nice of you. Uh, okay, so we have a lot of different ideas with rook c1 and knight d5. So, and bishop e3. Okay, those are all very, very nice moves. So, let's see. Uh, in the game, I went with rook c1. Mainly because um, 95 is nice, but I wasn't ready to make that commitment of, ex of like changing the positions dynamic. So I didn't want to do that just yet. And 
And so I left with rook c1, but let's look at knight d5. For example, knight d5, if take, you have this bishop e3 that was suggested a lot in the chat, and then you change this pawn structure for, um, it's kind of like this, that, that's what I was not sure about. Like, do I want my C pawn to be there, my D pawn to be, my E pawn to be in D5? And that's the kind of, that's the, that's the commitment that I didn't know if I'm, if I want to make by with taking with E pawn or C pawn. And when we get to some of the end game positions that are specifically for Marok C, you will see that how it's different to take with which pawn, because usually, um, Taking with C pawn is good if your rooks are ready on C file, and it kind of opens up that bishop. So maybe like bishop B5, bishop C6, stuff like that. Just brainstorming. So that's something to think about. But instead of knight D5, rook C1 is kind of more um, chilled move. And after rook C1, I had um, this idea to try and play something with like maybe start pushing over here because you remember how earlier I said that this um, this diagonal could be dangerous but right now my rook is here protecting my knight my bishop is protecting my knight so that diagonal is pretty pretty um, covered up now well that's the thing like knight g5 all of those moves are possible Queen c2 possible, but queen c2 knight b4 kind of worries me, so maybe not just yet. So, um, another thing with rook c1 is that rook c1, I really like it, especially because um, for those of you who have been watching my videos for a little while, you know that I absolutely love to put my rook against the opponent's queen. Uh, or if my, my queen is under opponent's rook, I run away with the queen. I that's ideally I don't like to um, have that hanging on my head so that's one of the other psychological things that I like to do in my game so yeah like um, that's one idea so Queen b6 what do you want to do Knight d5 possible but be careful that your b2 pawn is kind of also hanging so what do you want to do Was it possible to play bishop c4? I don't think so, because simply knight a4 and this guy is falling down. Because attack with bishop, attack with rook. No, I don't think bishop c4 is possible. So after queen b6, yeah, what do you want to do? Maybe think about um, setting like a trap for the queen. So knight a4 is interesting, but it's not it's not really tricky. Maybe think about a more tricky move. If you're suggesting knight a4 in this position, if not, there's a slight delay, so yeah, Hillary, you're correct. A3. So a3 is a good move, but what if a3 queen takes b2? Do you have any exact do you know exactly what you want to do? Okay, so a3 is very interesting, and after a3, um, there is possibility to play something like queen takes b2. Now, what do you do after queen takes b2? Knight b5 is possible, true, but... Um, so the problem is if you play knight b4, then if you uh, if you play knight b5, black has this knight d7, and now the queen has a lot of room to go around, and you can't really stop that. So what else?
Yeah, the other option to consider is knight a4. But what do you do after take? Rook c3, well, queen b4. And so, yeah, um, from what I looked up, it is actually okay to play something like this. But um, it's a little hard to actually trap the queen because rook a1 doesn't work. And you don't have enough um, enough tempi to keep the bishop safe and attack the queen. So one option that it is possible is to just do perpetual. So that's one option that's possible. And yeah, it is. Um, so like in ga in the game, um, one of the things that I try to do just psychologically without that's much um, like super deep calculation is when I'm playing a game and I'm sacrificing something if I see that I have um, repetition I know that okay so at least I have repetition now I can consider something uh, I can look for more and if there isn't more well repetition isn't the worst thing in the world so yeah that's one thing alright so in the actual game, after a3, my opponent played knight d7. Now what do you want to do as white? Oh, the position after queen takes b2? Sure. So I said if queen takes b2, you have knight a4. And then you just pretty much do repetition. And you can't really play rook a1 because queen takes your bishop. And it is possible to consider something like queen c2, but the problem is that the queen starts to run away. You see the queen now has these squares to run away to. So that was the um, idea behind queen takes b2 and knight a4. Now, knight d7. So yeah. Um, why didn't black take on b2? The queen, um, no, the queen wouldn't be trapped. If you guys find a better move, please let me know. Um, why didn't black take the pawn? Well, first of all, in this specific game, my opponent was about like 250 points more than me. <laughs> so, um, maybe black was one of the reasons. Also, there's still a lot to fight in the position, and I don't assume that it's everybody's dream to go in and do a perpetual so after knight d7 i have a lot of ideas with b4 knight g5 bishop e3 stuff like that so i considered the idea b4 and my i think one of the problems that i had with b4 was i didn't know what to do after knight e5 let's say take take and this is um very very weak to try and save it is, I mean, it is doable. You can try to pull something off, maybe. But um, eventually, this is this is a very big weakness. And I didn't want to give that initiative to my opponent with b4. So I played b3 first. Save, like, playing it a little bit safe. Having everything under control. And dealing with the e5 square problem first. Um, she, uh, he should have played knight d5 because this would have made the position more complicated but he didn't and he went for knight c5 and I feel like that's more of a personal choice because you can play knight e5 or knight c5 and both of them are equally good and equally complicated just knight e5 would have been more annoying for me because I would have to uh, move the bishop and decide if I want to exchange or not and then where would you move the bishop e2 c2 but now after knight c5 I know for a fact that I have to play bishop c2 because this guy was under attack so it's just little psychological stuff that you might not really see why this might be more complicated than this but one of the reasons that you can try to see immediately is knight c5 my next move is pretty much obvious but after knight e5, it's not that obvious. Am I taking? Am I moving the bishop? Where am I moving the bishop? So yeah, try to apply those in some of the games that you do. Knight c5, bishop c2, 
and he played rook c8. I think he should have played a5 already just to keep the pressure over here and not allow me to play b4 anymore. But he went for rook c8. Now, now what do you guys think I should do with white? So now I've asked the question, what should white do? I'm going back to the chat. And wow, 155. Let's see if we can hit 200 already. So... Um, one thing that I didn't want to do is to move this rook first because I don't know where this rook belongs. This rook might become useful later in long future with f4, f5. So that's something to consider. Um, that's why this rook hasn't been moved yet. Um, the, to answer Brian Clark, rook b1, queen e8, three knight b5. Um, it is, but the queen still runs away. Oh yeah, Akash already said that. Thank you, Akash. Well, that's a good saying. Thank you for sharing that, Zanti. Yeah, knight e knight d five is um, was my choice. Um, guys, bishop e three, be careful. See, I told you that diagonal is dangerous. Okay, so knight d five, and so knight d five. If bishop takes, with what with which pawn do you guys want to take? Hi, Kennedy. Okay, so you want to take with E. Okay. Um, well, that's interesting. Well, that's also what I went. I would have went, gone for. He didn't take the knight. But I would have gone for this as well. And so even though these look kind of scary, this pawn structure is very strong. And my bishops are both looking at the king side. And... The queen side is kind of already fixed. There's not much to achieve in the center, and now I can have a good attack in the king side. So that was the general idea. And I could just simply play rook b1, keep everything intact, maybe go for b4. So that's why he played queen d8. And here I went with b4. I think it was a little premature, and rook b1 would have been slightly more accurate, but b4. Um, was my choice and now I decided to push a little bit more for the center with bishop g5 and um, try to go over here so after this we got a position in which white is pushing a lot in both center queen side and king side and it's a very nice um, it's a very nice position mainly because of the space. We have white has a lot of spatial advantage. So what do you think black should do? Yeah, something simple. You are correct. When you take with the e pawn, e d five, the e seven pawn, and e seven, the whole e file, is also very cool. So yeah, you are correct. So. Yeah, black has been messing around with the queen side. So one thing that my opponent tried was with like h6. I think a5 would have been more strong to just try to figure out what's going on in the queen side. But he went with h6. And so after h6, um, we got this bishop e3. 
and Visual V3 was, um, I like the idea because I could imply more pressure over here or try to maneuver my knight somewhere and maybe push over here. So those are some ideas to consider. Yeah, so um, after that, my opponent immediately played something like king h7 to completely ignore the queen d2 ideas. So now what do you think white should do? White, ha you can see that white is forming an attack in the king side, but how to actually make the attack, um, how to finally start the attack? Yeah, if um, if black would were if black played a five, I would have definitely played b five, but that would also give uh, black some ideas with c five square in the long run, and I think it was worth a try. It does look good for white, doesn't it? So yeah, we could push the pawn. Push pushing h pawn, I think, is um, a valid idea, but a little premature right now. Um, knight h4 is very interesting, but I went for knight d2 because I didn't want uh, the knight to just be on the way, and I wanted there to so that there would be some coverage in the queen side. So that's why I went to knight d2. The idea, another idea that was interesting was queen e2, if knight e5, just knight h2. And I think, I think if it was play, me playing right now, that's the idea I would have went for with knight h2 and then f4s. Um, but six years ago, whoa, me, uh, I went for knight d2. And... So something like um, this happened with bishop b2, but the problem is like you're never gonna actually take this because everything is covered and like what do you do after rook b3? Or um, another idea is what do you do after like b5? So um, everything like you're kind of abdicating your king and it's just, it's not worth, this a3 pawn is not worth it. So that's why we, uh, bishop b2, rook b1, he just went back and he basically lost the tempi. So what about knight d4? Where knight d4? Here? It is possible, but I don't think you would want, like, you wouldn't really pay attention to it. You could just play bishop d3 and everything is safe and sound, and next you're trying with f4, f5. So I don't think it would actually make any difference in the position. And for example, if let's say knight comes to e5, there is always this take or... I actually like take, take, take g7. If you take on c1, this is a very strong bishop. And there's, there are a lot of sacrifices that happen like this. That you give up your rook for this big diagonal bishop. So that's, that's something to consider. Yeah, that bishop b2 was really weird. Bishop b2 then bishop g7. So that, and it gave me the chance to push for f4. And then do... Um, ooh, I don't want to give it up. So what do you guys think we should do? In this position for white. B5, interesting. F5, good. What else? I like the idea F5 a lot. I chickened out a little and I didn't play it in the game. But I would definitely do it now. Ooh, that's what I did. I played knight F3 and then later on tried for F5. Um, 
So Queen E1, nice idea. So let's look at in the game I played knight f3, but let's look at what does f5 turn into. I think my biggest worry was to give up this this e5 square, and I just I wanted to try and avoid that and prepare more before I play f5 because let's say take 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 it is a very interesting position you have two bishops your two bishops are very strong and very centered and everything but i just i wanted more positional rather than dynamic and that's why i didn't play it but it is a good move and it is definitely f5 is definitely worth considering should be your candidate moves so I went for knight f3 after take take rook a3. I just attacked this um, the rook and um, he just went to rook a2. So now what do you think you should do? So yeah, black got a lot of black did get a little activated uh, and. I didn't really like the idea, but so the, one of the problems right now is that you want to, you know, start pushing a little, start playing f5s and stuff, but the problem is that this bishop here is a little hanging, so there could always be takes and knight d4s and stuff like that, and so maybe think of a prophylaxy move. Um, B5, F5, they're all good, but I feel like you still need a little bit more, like, just preparing. Oh, what does prophylaxy mean? So, something like, okay, the easiest example to give is when you... Um, when you're worried about getting back rank mate and so you play like h3 to open a little room for your king to breed but there is no immediate threat of rooks like rook coming to last rank and mating you that's like the easiest prophylaxy example to give so just to think a little ahead and to try and block opponents ideas that's i think the best way to explain prophylactic um okay so yeah rook f2 Good, good one, Fragrance. So, yep, rook f2. And the idea is to now go for f5. And so, now the question is, what should black do? Well, my opponent played b5, which was interesting and active, but he should have played king g8. Just because if king g8, I, um, f5 still works, but... You see, king g8 is taking this away from this diagonal. And in a few moves, you see why it is important that you that your king shouldn't be in the same diagonal as this bishop. And also, rook f2, it's not only prophylaxy, it's also a little bit uh, tricky. Because, see, this rook is um, kind of weirdly placed, right? And if I get, if you give me two, three moves, I push this pawn, I take this pawn, and I pick your rook up. So another thing that I really, really try to do in my own games is to not leave any hanging pieces. See, all of the pieces that I have are protected with something. Almost all the pawns, except for this one, is also protected with something else. But my opponent's position, this trick is hanging over here. And that's something that you can um, try to uh, work on your games and also try to imply on your opponent so if there's like a hanging piece like a r alert going up here whoa that's a hanging piece maybe I could pull something off yeah so 
that's why I, that's another reason that rook f2 was played and that he should have played king g8 he didn't good for me he played b5 so now what do you want to do there is kind of a cool tactic and some intermediate moves so if you can give me one two three four moves on move five you can pick the rook up If you need more hints, let me know. If not, if you could give me um, a line on how to pick the rook up, a realistic line would be perfect. Chess Grant, how am I going to celebrate my birthday? Haven't decided yet. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get some cake from somewhere. I like Cheesecake Factory, but it's a little far away. So that's an idea. f4 well um i think you mean f5 and yeah so yeah you should start at f5 so now after f5 well the opponent is not going to take it because take take there's another check coming too so the best move for black is to take over here now what do you want to do Okay, uh, Samuel, you're correct. Taking on g6 is the best one. And after take back, you simply take over here. And now this is, uh, you have clear advantage. And yes, fragrance, you're good too. Good one. So you see now, whoops, whoa. You are attacking over here and here. So basically these two are under attack and one of them will fall. So Yay, you just got the, the you just got one on exchange. So now um, this the game is still not over and there's still a lot of things to think about. So now it's white to move. Who wants to give me a move? Pizza. I like pizza. Well, he didn't hunk his rook. I actually very smart. I took the rook. And there was a nice tactic with um, pushing the pawn and opening the, the route for the bishop. So not exactly um, hunging the rook, I guess. Oh, thank you, Chess Grant. So I saw a few knight g5s, and knight g5 is the cool move. Because if you take it, I give you this check. And if you block, I go over here. So something is falling, basically. And if you move the king, I just pick this guy up. So here is that. Um, that's why knight g5 was pretty cool. Take, take, check. Bishop h6. Now, bishop h6, you have to take. Queen f8, what do you want to do now? While you guys think, I'll tell you a tiny bit of story. Um, so I had this coach. <laughs> Not the coach that some of you heard about. I've had different coaches throughout. But um, he was very uh, keen on knowing uh, your where your pieces belong and just like strategy and dynamic and all of those big words. And um, so I was like a 10-year-old kid and I didn't really understand most of the things he said. But he, he did say this phrase that I really liked. He said that... Um, 
if you put your pieces in the right places, um, basically good stuff happens. And I did, like in this position, I put my pieces in the right positions and I got a few nice tactics out of it, didn't I? So, yeah, queen f8, rook f1. Uh, if queen comes to g7, well, least of all, you can just take and play rook f7 and bye-bye queen. So, that, that's why after rook f1, he just played rook f4, which is still a um, pretty bad position, honestly. Because rook f4, you can just take. And queen f h4. Um... Yeah, important to do this and don't go all hero and play. try to play too fast and lose the area. You know, this is a not very pleasant position, is it? It's like three pieces to a rook. You basically would blunder a rook. So be careful with that. And now, now how do you try to finish the game off? There are still like 10... Uh, 10 for... Um, Theoretic, okay, there are like 18 moves left, so it's not like an immediate win, but how do you keep the, the advantage? Because you have a clear advantage, and so, yeah, how do you do that? Oh, yeah, that is, is it, I mean, I feel like uh, that saying is very popular everywhere. The, so, I'm not surprised that Fisher said it and the coach I had twisted it a little and said it too. So, thank you, Abdullah. I have one of my good friends from Sudan. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, like all of them, these moves that you're suggesting are cool because it is a good position, but G3 is the best one. The idea is if G3... Well, you're just eating up a piece, so one thing that you should consider is, okay, so in this position, you know that as white you have advantage, but it is very important to play accurately, because if G3, you have to consider what's black's best move, you can't just wing it. So now I'm asking you guys, so after G3, what do you think black should do? Ooh, we're crossing 200 viewers. I, th I think that would be a record for me that I've noticed. Oh no, I lost two. Come on, five more. Ah. Okay. Um, I will go back to rook f1 and analyze knight f6. Uh, I just really want some input on what should black do right now. Queen g7, yep, okay, so good. You guys are thinking about queen g7, white and black moves, so let's go. Here, you suggested knight f6, well, uh, this is a kind of... What's, what happens if I just take, oh, before rook f1, oh, you mean here, knight f6? Um, I think if knight f6, well, what do you do after rook f1? Hold on, do you have rook a8? Oh, this is interesting. So many interesting lines. So rook a8 is definitely interesting, but what if you want to just play it chill and play rook f2? I feel like this is also good enough. Well, what would you do as black? Because I'm just taking f6 with my well, everything. Ah. Well, thank you for bursting my bubble, actually. I crash. <laughs> oh. Hold on. My bad. I was thinking I already took here. You can't take here and give this check, can't you? And then this guy's hanging. Sorry, I had a tiny brain, um, brain fart. Okay, so, yeah, what do you do after this? 
Because knight f6, the simplest thing is to take and to just play rook a7, no? And you're just picking this guy up. Yeah, this, this shouldn't be... Okay, so we agree on this is good. Yes, 200. Oh, brain freeze. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so glad we agree. And let's get back to the game here. G3, Queen, G7. Now, you would be picking this guy up, won't you? And what do you do after knight G6? White is winning, it's just a matter of playing accurate, 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 ah, playing it accurate, accurate, oh my god, I can't say it now. <laughs> it's just a matter of playing it, um, precise, there we go, here is a vocabulary. Yeah, so how can you play this, um, precise? Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, rook g4. Yep, rook g4 is the best one. Queen g4 is also good. So the idea is rook g4 is good because, um, well, you're not going to take this because this, um, this is a pretty easy winning endgame. And if you move away, I can also just get to this and this is also winning so rook g4 was the most precise one but i went with queen g4 and i got myself into this position which is still pretty cool because if you take here i would give um give this pawn up but it is still winnable uh, it's a little harder now but it's still doable so Um, so yeah, he just tried to go for queen d4, blocking it a little, taking a pawn, and I... So, queen h5 is good, whoops, that is not good, queen h5 is good, or h4 is good, so these are two of the good moves that you could consider, but um, what happened was that I just, I kind of wanted to exchange the queens off, and if take take, this is already winning position, so I thought that's a good idea. And if check, now you have to be careful with um, perpetual. So what would you do? And um, yeah, oh thank you. I will give your love to Talia supposed to see her Thursday. Tanya, I am not sure when I'm going to see her, but I'm sure she she already um, knows you guys here love her. So, that the end game with the knight against rook, it is possible to win, but it is kind of harder. So that's something that um, I would have to kind of like pay the price for, for not playing super accurate with look rook instead of queen g4, rook g4. So yeah, you, ca you go with king h1, knight e5, you give some checks. And now, can someone find me some nice mate or something maybe? It's not immediate mate, but you're working towards that. So, any ideas? Well, technically, if I showed you guys, if I showed this to you guys as just a puzzle and I asked you to find me mate, I'm sure a lot of you would. Uh, 
most of pretty much all of wife moves except for one of it oh maybe two of it is for check so if you even eat the queen i'm happy with that too Okay, so yeah, um, can someone give me a full line? Anyone? Full line? Like I, I do this, you do that, I do this, you do that. Okay, so let's oops yeah queen h8 king f5 now how do we how do you try to finish it off okay rook g6 is interesting but um what do you do now? Mm. It would make things complicated for no reason. So that's why queen h8 is better. Full line with pencil. <laughs> uh, okay, rook f1 is interesting. But it's better to play queen h7 first. Because if now you play king here, I can actually play something like queen g5. Queen g7 or rook f1 and it's kind of easier to to win this whereas if you were to play like rook f1 first the king could get some chance to run away but when your queen is on h7 the king can't really run to e4 anymore so now you do rook f1 so what do you do after knight f3 So somebody, if after that queen e5, if you exchange the queens and you push the h, she also has the b pawn to push. So be careful with those pawn end games. Yeah, so after knight f3, queen h4 is interesting. And then you do this check over here. And you can take and just play this, and this is winning. Or you can just keep taking more pawns. There's no immediate threat. So, if king g3... Now, um, you guys are going to love this move. Maybe think about uh, what would you do as white. These are the final few moves. So... King G2, uh, I think there's a little bit of delay probably. Queen C2 is interesting, but maybe try to keep the queen a little closer to the king. Yeah, queen f5, good job. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. 
Okay, so queen f5. And my idea is pretty simple. I am coming for your queen. It's either mate or queen. And this is just this is just winning, so yeah, this was one of the games that I really liked in my Roxy Pond structure, and it didn't really have end games involved. So we are gonna get to the end games pretty soon. Give me a second to pull the next one up. And yeah, so um, these are actually pretty cool games, and um, I really liked watching them. So, um, I think let's just start looking at the endgame ones already, right? Just give me one more second to make sure that this is the endgame one that I want, because there's so many of it. Ooh, this is a good one. I think any of it from here is pretty good. Okay, so, um... I'm just gonna show you this first before we hit the end game. So, this, um, I told you there are other ways to reach the Maroxi position. So this is one of it. With, for example, knight f3. And you do the c4, c5s. And see, you reach the same position. And you got into the classic Maroxi stuff. So, let me show you one more. I'm not going to get deep in this game, just because I wanted to show you um, what is it that we are usually looking for when we say, like, you can reach Maruxi from different positions. Um, there was one game that I played from different... Mm, there we go. It was from um, Sicilian, Nidorf, see? And you kind of get to this Maroxy Pond structure again. And it was a very nice game. I really liked it. It's just like Maroxy Pond structure without this white colored bishop. So here is an idea. And actually, let's look at this game really quick. Um, it wasn't that tactical, but it was pretty interesting. And. Um, the end game especially was kind of weird that I still can't believe I won that end game. <laughs> but well, why not? <laughs> so, um, we got into some some kind of um, Maroxy pawn structure, but the opponent played b5 and we got to this position. So you are a pawn up, but your pawns are kind of weirdly placed. And so, after castle, for example, this um, I really like this idea to try and bring my knights maybe a little jumping around, and that's what I did. So actually, this game was played in World Junior Championship 2015 in Kantimansk, and I played there very well. I, I think um, there was one critical game that if I had scored higher in that game, I would have gotten bronze, but I ended up k taking the um, sixth place. So that was interesting. Um, what was my rating in that game? Mm, I was barely 2100, just crossed it, and he was around 2350 in the previous game. In this game, I believe I was around 2250, and in, uh, my opponent was around 2300. So, yeah. Um, I just wanted to show you the how you could get to that position. Um, like, you can reach this Maroxy pawns um, in, from different openings. And that's why I'm kind of going fast instead of asking you guys to think hard on these games because this is just to make a point and to get to the end game so one more thing to keep in mind is these d5s these d5s are nasty <laughs> with white I absolutely hate them that's why I, one of my ideas is always to try to have a knight that controls a d5 square because when like when black gets to play this d5 like right now this is a weirdly placed bishop this is a good bishop but after d5 everything changes 
And after take, 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 it kind of starts to um, get kind of, black starts to get um, active, unnecessarily active, and that's what I kind of hate. Um, key concept that helps me to always push and to see if the pos what the position has to offer and that's something that I tried to do in this game I really pushed and I got the point how old was I in this game I would have been 17 in the game that I showed you previously I would have been it was 2014 so I would have been 16 yeah okay so now you see like this pawn is cool right and the queen is placed nicely this rook is placed nicely everything is nice so um that's why black has to try and play kind of dynamic and try to just chop 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 it a little and that's another reason that you see this queen is also misplaced over here you kind of want to bring your queen back to the game see now, what would you do with white? My first question of you in the game. It's not that it's not like a it's not like a hard move. It's just more like um, understanding move. And yes, rook a8 is the best one. Take take king h7. Now, now what do you think you should do? Um, I made a mistake in this position, and the game could have ended in draw because of my mistake, but it didn't. So now, what do you think you should do? If you can't make a decision between which moves to play, you can give me different candidate moves too. Now, too early to give up. Why should we give up? It's a world championship, man. I wanted the medal. So, um, guys, rook b1 is a blunder. No. Rook b1, just queen takes c4. Queen a4 is the move I played and is wrong. I mean, it's not, a, it's not like a blunder, but it's not the most accurate one. Queen a7 is interesting, but still not the best one. Queen a4 did look very nice to me too in the game and I played it, but um, not good enough. You need something a little more persuasive. So like the idea with rook d1, rook d8 is interesting, but if rook d1, just queen takes b3 attacking the knight and the rook. So, oh, I see one, um, Shy, um, hold on, Shilish, yeah, Shilish, I think you're the first one to suggest queen c8, and you're right, queen c8 is the best and the most accurate one, and the idea is pretty simple, you take over here, I'm gonna push, and if you go and take over there, I have this knight a5s, and if you try to play something like queen b4 again, again I have knight a5. And so my idea is simple. I want to get your exchange and try my chance in there. So, yeah, that is the simplest idea. 
spot. Oh. Mic problems, hair problems. Whoops. Okay. Um, so I played queen a4. And after queen a4, um, my idea was that if you were to take queen b3, maybe I could change and take over here and maybe take over there and push for that. But it's um, not enough. So uh, I would have still pushed, but after king g8, there is like not much to push for, honestly. And even though you would probably win this pawn, uh, it's just... This is like the, the driest endgame, I think, one of the driest endgames that I've ever played, and won. <laughs> so, um, she played knight d7, and here I should have played queen a7 with the same ideas. Like, if you take over here, um, I could try and create maybe some action over there. So, I could make the game more interesting, but I took... And I played rook b1. She should have played knight b6, but f6 is just good enough. And here is when we are talking, here is when I meant to push. Because this is like, this is like a really equal position. But just because I thought I could pull something off and I had the idea and I tried to play accurate, I did manage to get something out of it. I know, it's drawish, right? So... I brought the king closer, so in this rook end game. So, um, who is there anyone here who feels super confident about rook end? They rook end game knowledge? Not me. Anyone? Well, I'm glad you do. So, you know that this is a, um, like a super drawish, right? Yeah. So, um, one of the biggest things in end games and especially rook end games is to bring the king, activate your king. And that's what I did. And that's what she should have done. She should have brought out her king. But she didn't. And she pushed pawns. So, I started pushing pawns and now it got to a nice race. But my king is more active. See? If she plays king g6 first before she gets to whoops, she gets to bring her king closer as well. But in this position, her king is really far away. So she just gave up on the king on the queen side and started to push on the king side. So I know this looks scary, but what do you think is the most accurate move here? Um, to answer Sai Akrash, well, I th I know for a fact that we are going to stream um, the match in Pro Chess League between the Archbishops and... Give me one second. I don't want to say it's wrong It's actually not Pro Chess League. Oh, it's sorry. The, it's, the, it's, it's the St. Louis Chess Club. 20 on 20 against the San Francisco Mechanics Institute. There we go. Oldest club in the nation. I hope you heard that. And we're going to kick their butt. We are. So I know that Caleb and I are doing that. Um, yeah, we have the match commentary of St. Louis versus um, San Francisco. So some Sands. Sands versus Sands. So I know we have that. Sorry for the um, Proches League glitch. Whoops. But I know we're doing that from 6.30 to 9.30 our time. And here's the link. Thank you, Ben. So, yeah. Um, yeah, rook b3 is the most accurate. So if you start pushing king c6, black's also pushing. And whoops, not that much pushing. But you get the idea, right? Um, black gets really comfortable. So... As white, it, and as a chess player, it's your job to make your opponent's life over the board kind of miserable. <laughs> and 
and so that's why uh, you go with rook b3 first. You don't want to make things easy for your opponent, so you play rook b3 to cut the king a little, and you push the pawn first. See, the king is still not getting in. The pawns are still not getting in. And after h5, now you go with the king. So it's just a matter of which move to play first. Tim Olson, we do play men in chess. That is a very interesting comment. Of course we do. And okay, so after king d4, pushing a king, making a queen. Now, what do you do? You guys think I'm gonna make it and I'm going to get to this race and win the game? Well, I've already said I won the game, but do you think, um, well, I kind of blew it, but maybe calculate it a little. No, no, not to, not to insult them, like over the chessboard, the chess pieces. Like, don't let your opponents just easily come and mate you, make it hard for them. Thank you, Sayakrash, for the detailed explanation. And thank you, Tim Olson, for that comment. A little weird, but it is true. It's it's not that it's wrong. It's weird that it's like we have to say that. But thank you for knowing and acknowledging that. Okay. Um, so eventually, ideally, you want to be able to keep the rook. But it is unlikely that you will man manage to keep the rook, and that's why you try your best to bring the king as fast as you can. And now that the tiny problem is you can't really bring the king closer, so you can try to bring the king from behind the rook, and now this is a winning pawn end game. Right? You guys remember your pawn end games classes with me? You cast king up, king up, take, take, and voila. Even if king h3 doesn't really matter. As soon as you take it, this is this pawn is going that way, and that's a super win. So that was another game that I wanted to share with you. Now, um, I'm going to show you another game that I played, again, in Nidorf. But I'm not going to go into details about that. I'm just showing you the op openings that... Ha uh, could reach to Maroxi. So it's another one. I played this in uh, World U Championship 2015 against Bibisara. She played for Kazakhstan, switched to Russia. Not sure if she switched back to Kazakhstan, but at the time when I played her, I think she was playing for Kazakhstan. And yeah, so remember in the last game, uh, my opponent Irina, she played knight d7, right? And we got to that Maroxi pawn structure, but with bishop d7, we can also get to that position. And I'm just going to show you a little bit more, because my idea is to just show you, see, you got that exact Maroxi pawn structure, you got your rook out, you got your castle, and the only difference is that e2 bishop and d7 bishop are exchanged off. And you start to maneuver around a little. So. That's another game that I wanted to show you, and I'm not going to go into details because I want to show you some cool end games. Um, if you guys would like to see more Maroxi, we could maybe put, up it, put it up again for a vote like we did last week. Then we can go to more depth with Maroxi and look at more games on our Thursday, because we are going to have another two hours then. So, that's one game. Let's go to the next one. Um, so, ooh, this is a cool one. So, um, another way that you can get to Maroxi is with uh, this con, con variation. Some people call it Paulson, but I think there is a little difference between them. Anyways, con, Paulson. So, this is something that So Wesley played just a few months ago. Um, against Artemiev and so you see you're getting the same pawn structure again a little bit different because the bishop comes out but see the pawns are up there so if if uh, black were to play something like bishop e7 
or to try and bring the bishop from the other side is the same pawn structure. But the ideas are slightly different. And so we get this knight c2s. Now knight c2s are also a pretty cool idea. So um, you can try to organize your attack with f4. All right. I'm just showing you ideas. And another one to show is another game between So and Artemia. There is just a slight difference. He played b6. And they got this kind of development. But again, kind of a blitz, blitz tournament. So um, not as, um, not as, um, how do you say? I want to say thoughtful, but that might not be the right word. Um, but OK, so that was another one. Let's look at another one. Ooh, I like this one. Uh, so Yasser played one of the um, native Iranians, Kamran Shirazim. And that was kind of cool because I liked seeing that. And he, they started at c4, but they landed on, again, Marok C. A little different because the knights came out of that that way, but pretty much same ideas. And you can already see that black is a little struggling because he's not following the typical, um, typical um, routes. And... So I wanted to sh share that as well. Now, let's get to the end games, shall we? Uh, again, I was just trying to show you um, what is possible and what's not possible. And so, hold on, I think this would be, nope, next one. This would be our first end game. So see, they started with knight f3 as well, and then c4, and then just switched it but we got to the same exact position. So there, there's a line that the queen comes to a5 a little earlier instead of like playing a6 and rook c8. And that's usually when the knights have been exchanged on d4. And you get this knight d5. So maybe I'm going to pause a little second so you guys could um, take a breather. And I could take a breather. I was talking so fast. And you guys could try to absorb the position and um, think a little about after queen exchange, um, which pawn do you want to take with and why. Remember in the game that I did, I took it with E, just because that's in that specific position, that was the better idea and that I had the better attack um, with my bishops. But, all right, I'm going to see what, what's up in the stream and the chat. Do I play the Danish Gambit? Not really. Maybe I should. And sorry, I didn't see the question because I was talking for a little too fast. Tactics. Um, well, every game has a tactic, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, Paulson is with knight on c6. Yeah, so earlier knight c6 would be. Do I have examples against Hedgehog? Well, this is kind of that. And that's an idea that I had with Talia for Thursday in Ladies' Night stream and class to talk more about uh, what should black do for Hedgehog, yeah, if I can say it. Double isolated pawns. Well, thank you. Um, thank you, all of you, for participating. Wait, who's Yasser? No, you didn't just ask that. You're messing with me, aren't you? Okay, so... Well, taking over here is the most accurate one, but taking over um, A2 is also possible. And this is kind of just like, again, like one of the games that um, was played, just, I'm just showing you for the fun of it. And 
it ended in a draw because it's a kind of a weird end game to be honest but there's not much to it so that is um that's another thing to think about the queen a2s but queen d2 king d2 um pretty much with whichever you take it's a good idea for the end game specifically to take with c to the c pawn because if knight take you take with c and you bring the rook and attack and pawns and yay if you take with bishop i again take with c and now what do you want to do with this position like how do you want to bring your pieces out Well, good morning. Amish. There you go. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, it is kind of hard to keep them both up. I mean, uh, to answer, I cannot say that T R W for war. I think um, it kind of depends on your preference. Some people love Karakan, love French, love Alekhine, anything. Um, so I really think it depends on your personal ideas. So. Um, Exchanging rooks. Well, ideally, you would want your opponent to take your rook so you can take with the other rook and to control the file. So that's uh, ideally what you want it to happen, but it um, doesn't seem like it's going to happen immediately. So what you can do is bring the bishop out. Bishop e2 is good. I think bishop d3 is also good. Bishop b5, I'm not... I don't want to give the a6 chances, so I'm just going to go with bishop e2 and push we push with b4 so the idea is quite um simple you want to control everything you want to control the queen side you want to try and control the king side you want to control the center you are kind of controlling the center you are kind of controlling the queen side and not much is happening in the king side so your bishop is well placed over here your bishop is okay placed on e2 you can't really do much about it but what you can try to do is to try and maybe um, relocate some of these rooks right so black tries to bring the king you start pushing with that side you push more now you took all of the chances for the knights to get out here. See, so can't get into these two squares. And that's like, that is a very good um, thing to have. So black tries to get a little creative, but white manages to push up. Now we get this bishop d2 controlling the square. And you start to dominate on the king side. You're fixing this side, and you finally bring out your other rook, push more pawns. See, everything is controlled. This bishop is, mm, well, ideally you would want this bishop to be more active, but this bishop is controlling everything. Now, um, I'm going to give you guys a second to think about the end game because it's not a tactic not a tactical end game it's more like you kind of develop a feeling for what you're trying to do and yeah because the pawn structure is also kind of symmetrical and pretty much uh, white's advantage is all about the the space so pretty much the big question here should be how to use this spatial advantage to um, convert it to a full win so I do play a lot of scotch. I also play a lot sometimes um, Spanish Lopez. I like those. Mm. I have watched Star Wars. Not the biggest fan. 
but I have watched it. I do know who Obi Wan is. Rook two D two. Yeah, I don't get it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, pretty much two bishop on the space. So. Exchanging the rooks is a little too fast. You would want to create more weaknesses and some other holes and stuff before you want to exchange the rooks off. Yes, Mar um, Marcin, Bishop G4. Good, good move. Proud of you. Now what do you do? So maybe one of the things you can think about is maybe um, this rook could be somewhere better. I should have known that was a robot. Well, I'll know that for future. Um, bishop, oh guys, be careful. Bishop e3, you get rook c3 check, bye bye bishop. H4. Uh, H4 is coming up. You don't want to do bishop d7 because the idea is that... Okay, so White's main idea is pressure. All of these games, all of this pawn structure is about pressure. So you're putting pressure, 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 tension until your opponent breaks. That's the biggest idea in this, in this uh, endgame. And so that's why you go with rook f1 and then you push the pawn and you push. So it doesn't seem like you're doing much or your opponent is doing much, but you are. You are pushing. You are putting more tension and more pressure. So the opponent is pretty much just moving the bishop, waiting to see what's going on. And now you do rook h1. It is, it is possible to do rook h1 first and then push. So those of you who were thinking about rook h1 and just pushing the h pawn, that is perfectly fine too. And see the opponent, like opponent's last um, three moves. See from here to here, no difference. You just push the pawn, and you get this rook h3. So after rook h3, you push a little bit more. You bring it here. So now the, the idea is if um, what do you think happens if bishop goes to h8? Yeah, see, the black king is collapsing, isn't it? Well, one thing is bishop on h8 is really, really weirdly placed. So um, you could just take a chill and just bring the bishop out and try to create some stuff over here that's one thing that you can do because there's no more rook c3 check and black doesn't really have any decent moves another thing that it is worth considering but i wouldn't do it just yet is to like exchange stuff off and go to this rook end game it is a very interesting rook end game but the king is more active but just compare this position to this position. You don't want that. You don't want to free your opponent's pieces up, right? You don't want to just exchange your good... Um, you don't want to exchange your good pieces off with your opponent's um, weirdly placed pieces. So if Bishop h8, I would recommend to just chill for a second and see what the opponent wants to do. But... So in the game, black played bishop to a7, just because uh, to control something in the center. And now, 
why it is playing so chill it's actually um, a little annoying because bishop goes a little way you got bishop c3 just why it's like why would you even need this bishop to h3 right it's just one of those super chill like ah, I don't need this right now moves and finally you push for e5 you take this guy you give check and again such a chill move you are just 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 here not doing like bishop just protecting your pawn see and if bishop tries to go back to g1 why it took in d7 and black resigned i assume the resignation was mainly due to well um what are you what are you gonna do next there's this check and there's a bunch of other checks over here and if you come up um I can just try to go for this pawn. See, this is a dead pawn. And after that, that's a full queen. So, yeah, that was one of the interesting ones. Um, F5, rook F3. Yep, they're all good moves. And it's just, yeah, that's something like Magnus does. Just put, puts pressure, puts pressure, and the opponent breaks. Yep, all right. I'm glad you guys like this. Next one. Uh, let me just double check that this is the right. Yep, it's the right one. Because there are a bunch of the end games. So that's hopefully we can get through some of it. Alright, so see, this started with knights f3 and then c4 as well. And now we are getting to our usual Maroxi setup. Queen comes to a5 faster. You do the f3. You protect your pawns, and then you do this knight d5. And now we got pretty much same position um, structure, at least same as last one. So if you were to take with this pawn, um, b5 is kind of annoying, and you don't really know. Your pawns are kind of wiggling a little. So that's why taking with the c pawn is better. So, um, <laughs> now, let's say knight goes away. You push for b4, so you take away this critical c5 square. And, for example, king tries to come closer. You start pushing the pawn again, like in the last one. And next you get your a5. King d8. Now, what do you think white should do? So I'm going to go look up the chat a little. Uh, yeah, h6 is a baby queen. <laughs> well, was. Um, thank you. Patricia and Magnus would be proud. Don't rush. War. Yeah, he does say that too. I think everybody say that. But yeah, that is true. Thank you. Uh, I think I do have an endgame of Olf Anderson prepared to show you too. Will I stream till midnight so we can say happy birthday? Well, you can say it already because technically I was born in Iran and I've already had my birthday. So you can say that if you want to. <laughs> I see Tracy walking here and shaking her head. <laughs> um, thank you for looking... Um, from Poland. Uh, do I recommend Maroxi as best? Well, I feel like it really depends on your personal style, but my personal style is that I really like to attack and put pressure. So that's something that I really like, and that's why I like to use um, this pawn structure with Maroxi and all. Thank you, Tim Olsen. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. Okay, so yeah, one of the things that is possible to consider is this f4. 
mainly because, um, well, see, last game, last game the king was kind of more active, so the rook could try and jump around. Right now, the rook is stuck with this pawn. So that's something that um, white could try to improve. So f4, let's say e6. Now, see, black is trying to play a little more decisive rather than the last game where black just kept playing bishop back and forth. Now, you try to see right now, black mm, tries to mm, like activate the king but gave this pin for a brief second. Now, what do you want to do with white? Yes, that is true, um, Marty. Hold on, Matrix. Matrix. Oh, I just watched the movie Matrix. So, Matrix drama. That is true. It is easy to remember. Not not this year, tax year though. Haha. <laughs> um. So yeah, basically, what do you want to do right now as white? Bishop H4 is interesting, but think about something more uh, pushy pushy. So Bishop H4 is a nice idea and you're gonna use it to get something out of the position, but not right away. Yay! Thank you, um, Julio. Julio, sorry, pronunciations. E5. So the idea is pretty simple. If you take over here, you get that bish you get bishop h4, and you lose your rook. If you take here, you again get this bishop h4, bishop e1. Bye bye bishop. So that's why taking doesn't work. So the only two moves that are worth considering is knight moving and g5 to stop the check right so let's look at knight moving away first now what do you want to do with white If you find the correct sequence of moves, two moves, and you have clear advantage. Oh, so b5? Yes and no. Do something first, then b5. Yes, bishop b6 first. Oops, bishop b6 first, then b5. Yeah, this is pretty cool, right? So, um, see, if you were to take over here, bishop b4, and this is black is holding. If you were to play like bishop e1, this is a um, like a draw, super draw. So we don't want that. So the most accurate one is to check first and push the pawn. So the problem, the big problem is if you take, take, move the king. There is always this bishop d4s and the rook is uh, the bishop is pinned to the rook, and you can't really do that. So, what about g5? What do you want to do with white after g5? Thank you for all of you who are sending suggestions and recommendations.
Yep, bye bye bishop. So what about here? After g5, no more bishop h4s. So how do you want to win this? To be fair, you already do have advantage, but it is important to try and use it. So basically, how are you going to try and use this advantage? e takes d6 is a nice idea. What else? Fg5, okay, bishop g4, nice, f5, um, alright, let's, let's look at taking over here. What do you think is, uh, black's best move? So, um, in the game black took bishop b4, and after rooks got exchanged, now what do you want to do? So now, we all, uh, you all have probably heard a lot that two bishops really, really love open center. And this is pretty much open center. So how are you going to use this? and uh, use this advantage of two bishops and your um, possible past pawns and all, maybe? Yes, good job. Bishop d3. If knight takes on e5, you just take over there. And question, what if knight goes to f8? What do you do now? Yep, what do you do after knight f8? Uh, be careful. Maybe give me a full line. Guys, always think about takes first. Takes and, well, checks first, but there's no real checks here. So checks, takes, moves with threats. I have seen few of you uh, say the correct move. So yes, thank you, Marcin. Take and g6 and queen. Can't stop it. That was a full grown queen. I was gonna call it a baby queen, but around here is a baby queen, right? So um, after knight takes e5, bishop h7, let's say knight comes to g4. How are you gonna try and wrap this game up? Almost done. So, how? Thank you for the explanation, Ilya. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So, how do you want to wrap this one up? Maybe it's a little bit more support before you start pushed upon. Yeah, bishop d4. Good job, you guys. So if king goes to d8, you just simply push the king, push the knight away, and. Just no rush. See, now the knight is trapped. You already know, even if you forget to push your pawns or something, you're still pretty cool. You are winning. And if e5, just give a check, and this is also winning, because you can just pick this guy up, or you could just give another check over here. If the king goes to d8, if the king goes to b8, 
so many ways to win. You can take this, push, win. So yeah, that was another game. Let's look at another game. Um, I want to look at the uh, Anderson game or a Karpov one. Which one do you want? The Karpov one? Yeah, let's do a Karpov one. And we can look at the Ulf Anderson game um, on Thursday. So yeah, um, hopefully we'll be able to put up a vote again like last time for Thursday to continue with more Maroxi and see how that goes so you guys can have a better understanding and I can show you more and more games and end games and just different ways to get to Maroxi. So this is um, again you're getting to Maroxi stuff see a little different because we've looked at the bishop on e3 so far but Karpov um, played bishop g5 and well who am I to tell Karpov how to play castle queen d2 um, one thing to keep in mind is usually see right now there's no real danger of knights doing anything weird anywhere but after castle the, there is a danger of knights starting to jump around so that's why after the bishop is protected by the castle you move your queen away um, after bishop e6 uh, rook c1, queen a5, see you get that queen coming out again quickly, you get that f3 again, and in this um, a little different structure over here, so Carvo played knight a4 instead of knight d5, which is still pretty good, um, doable, nothing wrong with it, and after queen's exchanged, he got rook c6. So, yeah. How do you guys want to continue with this? What are your options? <laughs> Haven't really fully decided yet. Um, I. That's one of the options. We can do more strategy. Because um, one of my favorites, um, there's this one specific game in a book called Giants of Strategy that I absolutely love. It's called How to Beat Kasparov in 13 Steps. And I will show that game to you guys at some point. But we could do two hours of like strategy, different types of strategy, just trying to cover as much as we can. Or we could continue doing um, Maruxi or any... Um, different. If you have different opening suggestions, leave it in the comments after, and I'll look those up. So, yep, knight c3, good one. Knight c3 and knight d5. Now, what do you think black should do? It's black to move. Black has the option of taking or not. Thank you, Bob. Ah, oh, thank you, Mark and Marcin. Okay, so in the game, uh, they he played King F eight, but um, taking on D five is also interesting. But now you would take with the other pawn, just because. You push the rook to go to c7, and it's already more pleasant, and you already have an, um, have an age on pushing pawns. So that's something that um, you could consider. Now, king f8, now what do you want to do? Just because, like, we want, we've seen two, uh, two, three different endgames that uh, we saw with this bishop taking d5, cd5, and everything was set to go. What about now? 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, Zeppo. Okay, so Bishop e3 is the interesting one. You're gonna go use these holes as mentioned earlier in the chat. Thank you. So knight d7 is kind of like automatic response because if you don't want to take on d5 and you're not you haven't taken so far, you're not gonna take it too. And see the problem is after knight d7, your knight is leaving the center, so it gives some ideas to start pushing stuff over here, like h4 take now you take with the e because if you take with the c there are just nasty rook c3s and also right now your game is decided to be more in the king side with a hint on the queen side if possible to start pushing like b4 b5 etc so um your game is in the king side your next move is going to be h5 g4 f4 push 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 so that's why when you're going to do um, king side attack, it's better to have these kind of pawn structures. When queen side attack, the other side, the other um, take with c, basically. So now, let's say rook goes a little back, which is pretty much the only move, h4, h5, blah, sorry, been talking a little too fast. And king g8, you push f4. f4 is um, the most accurate because you take away this e5 square from the knight. Knight goes to c5, you bring out the bishop. Check, king up. For example, f5, bishop comes back. Now you want to eat a pawn. So let's say your opponent plays b5. What do you do? This is another critical moment. And let's see if you can play like Karpov. So, have I ever played four player chess? I tried that a little, uh, it was a little, um, not, mo not my most favorite. So h6 interesting, but the most interesting is g4. Why do you think g4 is more interesting? <laughs> High part. So, funny story, right now I'm supposed to be an organic chemistry tutor, and I forgot about it. <laughs> so, um, my friend slash tutor is here. <laughs> Whoops. What did I study in college? I'm studying biology and health sciences and, um, and in pre-med, so... <laughs> Okay, so g4 is cool mainly because um, if taking, you just take back. And um, so remember how I told you most of these end games is just about the pressure, pressure, pressure. So the pressure is on, see? <laughs> yeah, g4 just increases the pressure. It's not like you're going to actually take and lose the piece. So that's why it's better to just bring more pressure and if you take on c4 
great we exchange a pair of rooks up and now there is a still pressure I'm going to try and attack your pawns and that's why um, black just played knight c5 um, <laughs> after knight c5 bishop takes c5 let's say rook takes so taking back on c5 is one of those moves that you try to avoid but it's necessary because if you start moving your king you're losing tempi and then this pawn is weak and your opponent gets the chance to start jumping around so it is why it's a good idea to just take take and now h6 i remember earlier in the stream and uh, in the chats i read about h6 and everyone was like oh h6 well h6 is the cool move um black played uh bishop f8 and now king c3 g5 is also another good idea but after rook a5 only if you play rook b1 not just don't care about the pawn rook b1 and go for the pawn exchange uh, rook exchange and if rook takes you just push the pawn see cool tactics huh so who said there are no tactics here uh so but Karpov decided to play king c3 and now see um so i'm sure a lot of you have heard about the different colored bishop the opposite colored bishop end games even though the material is equal white is winning because this bishop is just a weird tall pawn the bishop doesn't have anywhere to go and um that's one of the big reasons that you have to really be careful on what you're trying to achieve um so like you've heard about this um the opposite colored bishop is a draw but that's not true it's not a draw every every position is different so you bring in more pressure you go after that that beautiful pawn and you are still keeping the pressure on now what do you want to do with white So, um, yes, h7. Now, what do you think is black's best defense? This is the last question I'm going to ask you. Okay, not really, but um, one of the last questions I'm going to ask you for today. So let me tell you um, what is wrong first. So with white, if um, so, if it's white to move, it's just a queen and voila. If bishop g7, yes, you do take on d5, and the pressure is still very high, and you just simply try and bring in your king. See, you um, fix everything over there, bring in the king, and that's actually how Karpov won the game. So the game is over, but I wanted to show you what is black's best move because bishop g7 was a losing move. So bishop uh, g7, we just saw bishop takes d7, you bring in the king and win. But if h7, rook takes c4, king d3, now bishop g7, now what do you do? That's why you should always think about checks first. You should try to train yourself. Always give the check first. Think about takes and then the defenses or the the, the attacks, like uh, defense like bishop g7. Yep, that is pretty much correct with what Fragrance just said. So that is why, well, if you play queen right now, it's not going to work because rook c8 and it's a draw it's a draw because um, king g7 is coming up and you're gonna lose the bit the piece 
So that's why you play bishop d7, taking the pawn first, rook c5, and now what do you try to do? You try to bring in the bishop, but um, white still holds advantage, but it's not as clear as a win as it was with bishop g7. So bishop h8, and again, it is still a um, good position, it is still doable, winnable, but let's say rook h5, what do you do? You see, it's getting a little weird. Uh, even bishop h8, even bishop h8, it's um, not as easy. You see, the king is too far, um, rook h5 is possible, but I still really like this rook h5 right here, because it's like you either take it or you don't take it, but like right now if you're just holding on, you could try to bring in some king and maybe take, take. Well, yeah, I don't think this is um, winning anymore. It's white still has the upper hand, but not winning. So, just to wrap up, h7, Karpov's opponent, um, Kavalik, played bishop g7, which resulted in bishop d5, and see, black just made life's, uh, white's life um, a lot easier by not taking the c4 pawn. And that's my biggest advice. Don't make your life's opponent, your opponent's life easy. Over the chessboard, just try to find the, the moves that makes it harder and harder for your opponent. And I think that's, that is one of the biggest things that I've learned in chess. And I try to apply it in all of my chess games. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the Maroxi series that we did today for um, the openings and how we can get to those openings and um, how to play with the end game. I think the most uh, understanding that um, the understanding situation was which pawn to take with. And I think, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully we'll do a poll and we'll see if you guys want to hear more of Maroxi on Thursday or you prefer to do a more strategy of middle game slash end game. And yeah, exactly. My life's not going to be as easy uh, when I actually have to study organic chemistry again. <laughs> All right. I wish you all the best, and I'm going to go try to find a cake and celebrate my birthday. Okay, uh, see you all later.